Shabbat Shalom. I'm Rabbi Yuri Korshun, and this is Live from Home. I want to welcome our Beth Israel Messianic Synagogue members and all our podcast listeners from around the world. This is Erev Shabbat on Friday, May 21st, 2021. This evening, Eric and Anya Painter will welcome us into their home and lead us in our Hebrew prayers and worship. After that, I will rejoin Live from Home as we study this week's Torah and scripture readings. Right now, I want to ask you to hit the share button on this Facebook post, inviting your Facebook friends to join us as we are getting started. Also, please hit the like and the follow buttons and join in with your comments. From Ina and me, Shabbat Shalom. Now let's join Eric and Anya Painter live from their home. Blessed are you, the Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us in your word and given us Yeshua our Messiah and commanded us to be light to the world. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. The children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. Oh, my God. 
gratitude. We're so grateful for your faithfulness, for how you sustain us and preserve us. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for the life that you give us.
Thank you, Eric, for that wonderful time of worship. Now I want to give special thanks to all who are faithful supporters of Beth Israel. Such support gives us stability and allows us to expand our efforts to serve our community. I believe the Lord is pleased with our faithfulness to Him. If Beth Israel is a blessing for you, please consider blessing Beth Israel as well as that allows us to be a blessing to steal others. We are grateful for your cheerful generosity and the sacrificial giving of your tithes and offerings. You can find information about how to give online at bethisraelnow.com slash giving. Our online giving platforms are Giving Fire and PayPal, both very secure and easy to set up. Now we have an important announcement. We are looking forward to a very special congregational event in June, the Bat Mitzvah of one of our young people who is coming of age. Audrey Rose is to be Bat Mitzvah on June 5th in our Shabbat service here in Beth Israel Synagogue. You are welcome to be present to support Audrey on this joyful occasion. Before we study the scripture, I want us to pray for Rabbi David. Rabbi David is in cardiac rehab, a two month program to rebuild heart and body strength after his open heart surgery. Please continue to pray for him, especially that the heart artery grafts and his sternum will heal without any infection or complication. So Mishpacha, let us pray for Rabbi David. Lord, thank you so much for Rabbi David, Lord. We pray in the name of Yeshua for Rabbi David. We pray that you will heal him. You will completely restore him. That you will bring, breathe your strength into him, Lord. Thank you so much for your power, for your peace, for your shalom over Rabbi David, Lord. We pray for him in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Also, we'd like to pray for Elizabeth Stone. I would like to read her message from a couple of days ago. I got my, result, my results of the MRI and unfortunately there is another tear in the same shoulder. That is three times now in the same shoulder. It is discouraging asking God to lead me. So let us pray for Elizabeth. Lord, we pray for Elizabeth in the name of Yeshua. Lord, we pray for her complete healing and restoration, Lord. We pray for her shoulder in the name of Yeshua. Lord, please heal her, lead her, give her understanding what to do, Lord. And please, Lord, in the name of Yeshua, completely restore her shoulder. We pray for her in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Also, would like to pray for Denise Trujillo. Uh, this week, she had a knee surgery. All went well with the surgery, recovery, and PT. She can bear weight on it but do it in moderation so thank you uh congregation for your prayers for her so let us pray for denise for her restoration lord thank you so much for denise we ask that you will bless her and completely restore her knee lord in the name of yeshua bless her with your presence lord with your mercy be with her during this time of recovery lord in the name of yeshua amen also would like to pray for Laura Gordon. Uh, I would like to read her email from a couple of days ago. Prayers for our family. My mom passed away Saturday. Long battle with breast cancer. Funeral was today, on Friday today. So let us pray for Laura and for all her family. Lord, we pray for Laura Gordon, Lord. We pray for all her family in the name of Yeshua, Lord. We pray that you will bless them with your comfort, Lord, that you will bless them with your presence, Lord. Please, Lord, breathe your comfort inside of them, Lord. Help them to stay in your peace, Lord, and lead them, them through these difficult times of mourning, Lord. We pray for them 
We pray for Laura and all their family in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mishpacha, for praying. Also, would like to pray. Uh, I would like to read a mail from Masile Miranda about her husband. I wanted to give an update. Archie and I have returned to the area, to the Jacksonville. We arrived a week ago Wednesday. He got out of the hospital on Tuesday afternoon. Testing while there showed that he had two mini strokes. Doctors have changed the meds and this week dialysis has gone much better. So let us pray for Archie. Lord, we thank you for Archie, Lord. We thank you for Marcelia, Lord. We thank you for this family. And as a congregation, Lord, we pray, bless them with your healing, Lord, with your restoration. Bless Archie, Lord, with your presence and completely heal his uh, all the blood vessels inside of him, Lord. Bless him, Lord, with your restoration in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Also, let us pray for Jesse Guinness. He sent us an email. So I would like to read it and we can pray for him. Please, can you pray for me? I have body ashes and head aches. I took COVID test, but the results are not in yet. Don't think it's that, but two precautions. Thank you. So let us pray for Jesse. Lord, thank you so much for Jesse, Lord. And we ask that you will heal him, Lord, in the name of Yeshua. Please bring your freedom, Lord, your restoration, your healing, your protection to him and to his wife, Lord. Thank you so much for your presence with him right now. And thank you for answering our prayers, Lord. We ask for Jesse, please touch him, heal him and restore him. In the name of Yeshua, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, congregation, for your faithful prayers. It is an important part of our daily ministry to pray for one another. Today, I want to talk about what the Lord says about Israel, how we, the Messianic community, the Jewish Messianic community, should relate to Israel. It might seem that these are such simple questions, but how important it is for us to have the right answers to them. We are beginning with the book of Numbers from today's Torah chapter. Let us open Numbers chapter 6 from verse 24 to verse 26. Actually, I would like to pray right now with this place of scripture. Yevrecha Adonai Vishmarecha, Yaer Adonai Panavelecha Vihunecha, Yisa Adonai Panavelecha Vayasem Lecha Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Today I want to speak in the light of one of the most famous prayers, the blessing on of which we conclude our Shabbat services. This is a wonderful ancient prayer, and it is so important that we understand what it means for us. So let's look closely into the words of this blessing, first pronounced by God. First of all, this prayer is filled with deep spiritual meaning. These words reveal the Lord's desire for us, His Father's heart full of love for His children. Each of us today can boldly accept God's love as expressed through those words and be confident that truly the Lord wants to bless us. It is in his heart. It is his heart to bless us. This prayer is for each of us and for each of us it is a great blessing as well. But in the words of this prayer there is yet another meaning, a very important meaning which unfortunately seems to be overlooked by many believers. So let's read again the opening and closing lines of Aaron's blessing. It is verse 23 and it is verse 27 of this beautiful prayer. So verse 23, the beginning of this prayer. Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, that this is how you are to bless the people of Israel. You are to say to them. 
And the closing, verse 27, after all this beautiful prayer. In this way, they are to put my name on the people of Israel so that I will bless them. A new meaning and the most interesting meaning opens up to us. Once again, I want to repeat that this blessing applies to every believer in Yeshua, in the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. However, initially this prayer was di di directed precisely to the sons of Israel and the, Jew and the Jewish people at state of Israel. Moreover, I am deeply convinced that even today this blessing relates directly to modern Israel and to the entire Jewish people. This is the message of the Lord to his chosen, his country, to his Israel. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Today we see so much hatred in the world towards Israel, towards the Jewish people. Today there is a war against God and his people, and not only in Israel, it is also happening on the streets of cities all around the world. In some European cities and even in Israel itself, synagogues are being smashed by extremists. It is now generally unpopular in the world to support Israel. And at the same time, formally, anti-Semitism is hastily condemned, hotly condemned. No one in decent society would call themselves anti-Semitic, but many people openly condemn Israel and Jews in general. Sometimes it feels like the whole world is going crazy trying to condemn the Jews. And of course, we, a spiritual people, a spiritual community, understand that the root cause of this war is the war that Satan is waging against the God of Israel. So this is the heart of this hatred, is the war against the God of Israel. We as a Messianic, Jewish Messianic community, society, cannot just stand aside and remain silent. I believe that our direct calling from the Lord is firstly to pray for peace in Jerusalem. It is commandment from the Lord. And secondly, to speak from a correct understanding of that war, an understanding derived not from the news reports and media spin of the day, but entirely from God's own unchanging word. Today, I do not want to try to explain the cause of the problems and conflicts taking place in Israel, but I want to look from the perspective of the scriptures at the existence of Israel and at the God's love to the Jewish people. As a basis for our father conversation, I want to cite a few passages from the Bible. I would like to put foundation, I would like to lay foundation for us today. Let us open book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through verse 3. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. This is promise from the Lord. Then Adonai said to Abram, get going out from your land <laughs> and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land that I will show you. My heart's desire is to make you into a great nation, to bless you, to make your name great so that you may be a blessing. My desire is to bless those who bless you, but whoever curses you, I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. The first and most important promise from the Lord to Abraham, I will bless you, so you will be a blessing to all the earth. It is from the Lord towards Israel. And as a sign of this promise, the Lord gave Abraham the land, land of Israel. Let us read Genesis chapter 13, 
verses 14 and 15. Genesis 13, 14 and 15. After Lot separated himself from him, Adonai had said to Abraham, Lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are to the north, south, east and west. For all the land that you are looking at, I will give to you and to your seed forever. Forever. We live in a time when nations are rebelling against the Lord and against everything that is connected with him and his existence. It is as if people are trying to delete the name of God from history and call themselves the ruler, put their name above the name of the creator. This time reminds me very much of the time of the construction of the Tower of Babel. In the book of Genesis chapter 11, we can find this story, this event. You remember that humanity wanted at that time to build a tower up to heaven in order to exalt mankind above everything else. You recall that it did not go well for them. Because of this account, my first language is Ukrainian, my second is Russian, and my third is English. It didn't go well for them. We know that the Lord created this universe and everything in it, and that He alone is the only real ruler and owner of this earth, not the governments, not the state, not people. The Lord, He is the ruler. Since the Lord is creator and ruler of all, he certainly has every right to allocate the land to whomever he wishes. I would like to tell you a very important truth. Long before the emergence of Europe, the United States, Russia, and modern Palestine, our Lord promised Abraham and his descendants the land of Israel for eternal possession. Let us read Genesis chapter 17, verses 7 and 8. It is in the scriptures. Genesis 17, 7 and 8. It is the third time the Lord is promising. Yes, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your seed after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant in order to be your God and your seeds God after you. I will give to you and to your seed after you the land where you are an outsider. The whole land of Canaan as an everlasting possession and I will be their God. Note that these verses use the word everlasting two times, an everlasting covenant and an everlasting possession. That seems to suggest that he expects his covenant and his assignment of the land are everlasting. And for all of us, I would like to remind that everlasting means eternal, means infinite, means time without end. This covenant is forever, and this land is forever, forever to, the, to Abraham and his descendant. Since there is so much time in everlasting, let me take just a minute to give some history of the ancient people we know as the Philistines, people whose name became the modern name of Palestine. The Philistines, Hebrew Plishtim, are an ancient people who inhabited the coastal part of Canaan since the 12th century BC. They were mentioned several times in the Bible, beginning from Genesis chapter 10, verse 14. We can find there about Plishtim. They lived on the south coast of Canaan from the 12th century BC until 604 BC. 
For centuries, they were subjects of Assyria and then the Persian Empire. Finally destroyed by king of Babylonia, they lost their distinct ethnic identity and disappeared from the historical and archaeological record by the late 5th century BC. They disappeared. But you will notice that the Jewish people exist to this day. And today we have the state of Israel and Jerusalem as the capital of the Jewish state. So now let's continue with our theme and once again look from the perspective of the Bible at God's desires for Israel. Let us again read this beautiful prayer, this beautiful blessing. May Adonai bless you and keep you. From the very first words of this prayer, we see that the Lord wants to bless Israel. This is his will. This is his aspiration. To bless Everech from the root bracha, which means blessing. By blessing, scriptures understand the conversion and the impact of God's mercy, of grace, his grace on a person or group of people, either by God himself or by people acting according to the will of God. I believe there is a certain place in the heavens where everything is stored up that the Lord has prepared for Israel. It is in the heavens. His will, his resources, his power, his anointing are the strength we need for our lives today. Because of him we live and breathe. He gives life and sustains life in us. The Lord protects Israel from enemies and diseases. He commands his angels to protect us. And it is only by his perfect will that such a beautiful country, Israel, exists today. Let's see what God has to say about the restoration of modern Israel, of today's Israel. Let us open Isaiah chapter 49, verses 14 through 22. Isaiah 49, verses 14 through 22. This is about modern Israel, about our times. Started with verse 14. But Zion says, Adonai has abandoned me, abandoned me. Adonai has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her child at the breast, not show pity on the child from her womb? Even if these were to forget, I would not forget you. I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are always before me. Your children are coming quickly. Your destroyers and plunderers are leaving and going. Raise your eyes and look around. They're all gathering and coming to you. Adonai swears, as surely as I am alive. Can you imagine how beautiful it is? As surely as I am alive. I'm Israel Chai. O Davinu Chai. Let's continue. Verse 18. Adonai swears, as surely as I am alive, you will wear them all like jewels. Adorn yourself with them like a bride. For you desolate places and ruins and your devastated land will be too cramped for those living in it. Your devoters will be far away. The day will come when the children born when you were mourning will say to you, this place is too cramped for me. Give me room so I can live. Then you will ask yourself, who fathered this for me? I've been mourning my children alone as an exile, wandering to and fro. So who has raised this? I was left alone. So where have these come from? And verse 22. 
Adonai Elohim answers, I am calling to the nations, raising my, my banners for the peoples. They will bring your sons in their arms and carry your daughters on their shoulders. Today, with our eyes, we see the fulfillment of the prophecies of the restoration of the Jewish state. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 8, 66, 8. Who had heard such a thing? Who has seen such thing? Can a land be born in one day? Can a nation be brought forth at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. In one day, on May 14th, 1948, after the proclamation of independence, and on May 11th, 1949, by a UN decree, the state of Israel was restored to a part of its historical God-given territory, giving us the confidence that in time the fulfillment will be complete. We see the fulfillment of God's promises, which were spoken through the Hebrew prophets. What a beautiful place of scripture. What a beautiful time we'll live in. I believe with all my heart that the Lord himself gathers his children that he is the author and the restorator of the Jewish state. The Lord's mercy and faithfulness is infinite. And because he did not betray his people, our people, every believer from all the tribes of the earth can be sure in the Lord's faithfulness because he's faithful. This is his heart to be faithful. He's faithful, Lord. Now is a difficult but also prophetic time when everyone who calls himself a child of God, everyone who prays and worship to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob through his Messiah, the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, must open his heart to God's love for the Jewish people. This is the time. Now is the time to show your solidarity with the God of Israel and with the people of Israel. This is the time. I'm Israel Chai, Oda Vinu Chai. Israel is alive, and Father of Israel is alive. Dear friends, the time comes when we must agree with the Bible, become a people of the book. In my personal experience, I remember when what a great revelation it was for many people when they learned that Yeshua, Jesus, is a Jew, that all the apostles are Jews, that the Old Testament is the Torah and the Hebrew scriptures, that Mary, the mother of Jesus, actually she is the Jewish girl, Miriam, and that the entire Bible is filled with love for the Jewish people. I want to bring one example from the New Testament about God's love towards the Jewish people. It is Romans chapter 9, verse 2 through verse 4. Romans 9, verse 2 through verse 4. My grief is so great, the pain in my heart so constant, that I could wish myself actually under God's curse and separated from the Messiah if it would help my brothers, my own flesh and blood, the people of Israel. They were made God's children. The Shekinah, the glory, has been with them. The covenants are theirs. Likewise, the giving of the Torah, the temple service, and the promises. The Christian world know him as Apostle Paul and the Jewish word as Rabbi Shaul, one of the most famous apostles, emissary for non-Jews, he devoted his entire life to ministry to his own people, to people of Israel. 
his heart was full of love towards Jewish people. How beautiful it is. Let us move to the next part of the blessing. The second part. May his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, his shalom. An important meaning in these words, lift up his face towards. It is to direct his attention, his care, his love towards you, to remember his plans in your life and in the life of Israel. I want to touch one of, this, one of the spiritual meaning of these words from the scriptures. When I read, read these words, I remember the prayer of Moses when the Lord was angry with the sons of Israel and said that he would no longer lead them, but would send his angel. So let us read together. It's in Exodus chapter 33, verses 11 through 18. But I would like to read a couple of these verses. Exodus 33. This is the story when the Lord said to Moses that I won't go with you because I can destroy you. I will send my angel with you and he will lead you into the promised land. So, but the, but the Moses asked the Lord to change his mind. And so let us read verse 11. So Adonai spoke with Moses face to face. Do you remember this prayer from book of uh, chapter 6? May his face shine upon you. So here it is. So Adonai spoke with Moses face to face, panim el panim, as a man speaks with his friend. Then he would return to camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not leave the tent. Verse 13. It is prayer to the Lord from Moses. Moses praying. Now then, I pray, if I have found grace in your eyes, show me your ways, so that I may know you, so that I might find favor in your sight. Consider also that this nation is your people. My presence is the answer from the Lord. My presence, and in Hebrew it's panai, my face, the face of God. What's interesting, for me, the Lord does not say my kavod, my glory, but he said, my panai, my face will go with you and I will give you rest, he answered. But then he said to him, it is Moses saying to the Lord, if your presence, again, panecha, if your face does not go with me, don't let us go up from here. How could Moses speak with God face to face? Panim el panim. How could he ask the face of God to be over Israel? We know that the Bible teaches us that no one can see the face of God and stay alive. It is clear from the scriptures. The Lord showed this great mystery to Moses in the chapters 33 and 34 book of Exodus, and we can read it home. When he himself passed by Moses, and at the same time the Lord himself stood next to Moses, covering Moses' face with his hand, and the Lord calling to the Lord, proclaiming his attributes. I am convinced that this one, the one who came to Moses and stood with him, covering his face, none other than our Messiah Yeshua. In Colossians 1, 15 and 16, Colossians 1, 15 and 16, let us read. It is about Yeshua, the Messiah, our Messiah. He is the image in Greek, Akon, image, representation of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, the seen and the unseen, whether thrones or angelic powers or rulers or authorities, all was created through him and for him, 
for Yeshua and through Yeshua. The great almighty God whose face no one can ever see and stay alive, whose glory no one can endure, revealed to us his face and his son in Yeshua, our Messiah. This is the revelation Moses received on the mountain, and his own face began to shine from what he saw in the mountain. There on the mountain, Moses met the Son and saw the glory of the Father. I truly believe with all my heart, when we pronounce Aaron's blessing over the children of Israel, over the Jewish people, we ask the Messiah, the Paneha, the God's face to come quickly. Yeshua is the one who revealed to us the face of the Father, who is the blessing and life of Israel. In addition to physical protection and blessing, we need spiritual awakening, so that the face of the Lord shines over us, so that the Messiah will come to us, to his people. Only with the coming of the Messiah will shalom, real peace, come to this earth. We know that with the second coming of our King and our Lord Yeshua, restoration will come to this world. Jerusalem will become the capital of the world and nations will flow to it to worship the Lord. We can find this prophecy in Zechariah chapter 14, Zechariah 14, verse 16. Finally, everyone remaining from all the nations that came to attack Jerusalem will go up every year to worship the king, Adonai Tsevaot, and to keep the festival of Sukkot. All the nations who fought with Jerusalem will come to worship the Lord into Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And also, to all who call themselves believers, I want to remind today, Yeshua will come not to Moscow, not to Kiev, not to Washington DC, not to Paris, but to Jerusalem, the capital of the Jewish state. And the least, the last but not the least, the last verse of Aaron's blessing, in this way, they are to put my name on the people of Israel, so that I will bless them. This word means, I will claim my ownership of them. They belong to me. I myself will bless them. You are his. He will not share you with anybody. Don't be afraid. Therefore, I want to close with one very important prayer. And before I want to read from Psalm 122, and after that we will pray. 122, verse 6 through 9. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be at peace. May there be shalom within your walls, quietness within your places. For the sake of my brothers and friends, I now say, shalom be within you. For the sake of the house of Adonai, our God, I will seek your good. So let us pray for Jerusalem. Let us pray for Israel. Let us pray for the peace over Israel and Jerusalem. Let us always pray for the peace for Jerusalem. Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful time that we can pray, Lord, to you. We can pray and ask for Jerusalem. Lord, please bring your peace. Bring your peace over your land, over your people of Israel, Lord, over all the nations who live in Israel, who live in Jerusalem, who live in Israel, Lord. Bless them with your peace in the name of Yeshua. And Yeshua, we ask, please come quickly, Lord. Bring your peace, bring your revival into your land, Lord. Let your people know you and pray to you, Lord, in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your salvation. That we thank you for your protection, Lord, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. In the end, I want to remind you that if Beth Israel is a blessing to you, please consider being a blessing to Beth Israel. We will close with Aaron's blessing, as we normally do at Beth Israel. And 
Then we will return to Eric's home for a final worship song. So let us pray. Let us receive this prayer again. Yevrecha Adonai Vaishmarecha. Ye er Adonai Panavelecha Vihunecha. Yisa Adonai Panavelecha Vayasem Lecha Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpacha. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. What a great day to be together. And let's end on a high note. If you're uh, maybe sitting on your couch, now's the time to stand up and make room for some dancing. I will exalt you, O oh Lord, for you have lifted me up. I call to you, Lord, for help, and you hear me. I will rejoice in the morning, at noon, and the night, for you shown mercy to me I will exalt I will exalt you O oh Lord for you have lifted me up I call to you Lord for help and you hear me I will rejoice in the morning at noon and the night for you have shown mercy to me so You have shown mercy to me, my heart will sing. You have shown mercy to me, fill me with joy, joy, joy. You have shown mercy to me, you have shown mercy to me. Show mercy to me, my heart will sing. You have shown mercy to me, fill me with joy, joy, joy. You have shown mercy to me, you have shown mercy to me. Oh, you have shown, you have shown mercy to me. Shown mercy to me, mercy to me. Shabbat Shalom.